Good morning to our Faith Baptist Church family and those of you that are watching by Facebook. What a beautiful spring day God has given to us. I want to invite you to turn with me to the book of Philippians, Paul's letter to the Philippian church. And we're going to look at the first chapter today, Philippians chapter 1. In fact, we'll begin reading at the very first verse of the chapter and uh, read down to verse number 11, although we'll be alluding to other parts of this epistle as the message goes on. Philippians 1, verse 1, the Bible says, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always and in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Here we are now over a month into our shelter and placed scenario in our community, and I'm sure all of us have had to make several adjustments in our lives. For one thing, I haven't seen some of you, many of you, perhaps most of you in person for well over a month. Now that's difficult in any profession, but for people in ministry, for pastors like myself, to not spend personal time with his members is a very, very difficult thing. Our relationship is based upon that interpersonal contact. But we've all had to make adjustments during this time, and I'm looking forward to the time when we can have organized, consistent, uh, times of fellowship back in our church services once again. I, I really miss that. Still want to have an opportunity to speak to some of you on the phone or, or uh, some of you contact us. And sometimes I've even run to, into some of you or you stop by on occasion. Uh, I'm reminded of how much just I miss everybody. And that's because a church is a family. And when we are family, we can remain close to each other in spite of distance and time. People who do not have the benefit of a church family will not, of course, understand this. And certainly those without the Lord Jesus Christ and a relationship with Jesus Christ will miss out on this important dynamic of life. And that's the fellowship that we share together. And I thank God for my church. I look forward to preaching to more than just Pastor Jake and Pastor Joel again here in the, in the auditorium. I look forward to having you physically in person in our auditoriums. I look forward to hearing the choir specials. I look forward to the beautiful offertories. I look forward to hearing Martha Valenzuela laughing at my humor again in the congregation. I really miss that as well. I look forward to meeting my friends at the door after a, a wonderful, rousing church service and shaking your hands and greeting you and speaking to you. I even miss those occasions where the little ones come into my office seeking fruit snacks or peanuts or some snack. I, I miss all of that. I haven't had that for several weeks now. Yet I know in my heart that things are going to return back to normal, whatever normal is for you at some point in the future. And some of you have voiced the opinion that because of this uh, COVID-19 issue, that life for some of us will never be the same. But that's okay too. I'm hoping it will be better for you when all this blows over and is gone. I hope this experience reminds our country also that there is a God to whom we are accountable and a God who is in control of all events. And he uses situations and circumstances like this to draw our minds and our hearts back to him and his plan ultimately for our nation. No matter what happens, I take great comfort in knowing that my church is still going to be there for me and for my family. And there is an unbreakable bond that we share in Jesus Christ that's not based upon circumstances that we're going to. And, and for that reason, I am thankful. And I want to preach a message I've entitled, What Holds Us Together? As God's people, 
<clears throat> as a church, what holds us together as a group of people who love the Lord? When Paul wrote this book of uh, Philippians in this letter, he was not writing from a prophet's chamber where he was getting up every day and enjoying tea and sharing the fellowship and company of his Christian friends. Uh, Paul wrote this several miles away in Rome. Specifically, Paul was writing this letter from a Roman prison under very difficult circumstances. And he was trying to encourage the people that were his friends, and he was talking about a bond that permeates the relationship that comes to God's people. In verse 3, he says this, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Now, there are no doubt people in, in our lives that we just as soon forget. <laughs> but he said, every time that I think about you, I thank God. Every remembrance. He said in verse 8, for God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And at the end of this epistle, Paul mentions how the believers in Philippi had been so involved in his life that they sent gifts and they financially and in other ways, material ways, supported him and met his needs while he was a prisoner in Rome. What allowed this tremendous relationship to continue and this fellowship to thrive in spite of the fact that he was 4,600 miles away from this church and these believers who he endeared himself to? Well, there were some things that they had in common. And I want to allude to those in this passage of Scripture today and remind ourselves about the things that we share in common that bind us together in spite of the shelter-in-place ordinance that's going on in our, in our society at this time. If you're taking notes, first of all, I want you to notice a common message. In other words, they believe the same thing. When Paul spoke about the fellowship that they enjoyed in verse number 5, it was clearly centered around the gospel of Jesus Christ. In verses 15 and 16, he makes reference to the preaching Christ. Then he says in verse 18, What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in priest tense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. So how does a shared belief in the gospel unite us together in the Lord Jesus Christ? It's not like we're just saying, hey, I believe this, you believe that, that's great, give me a virtual high five, we believe the same thing. It went much deeper that, than that, it involved an understanding that they shared this bond in the gospel, in the message that they brought, because it unified them in the sense that they were all forgiven because of the same precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. They experienced a, a, a positive outlook on life and a, and a hope in heaven because of this shared forgiveness. It's something the lost world cannot comprehend, nor does it experience. And a child of God who's going through difficult, and difficult times in life goes through with a different perspective, understanding that shadowing all the things that are happening in his life presently is a knowledge that his past, present, and future sins have been forgiven. Isaiah expressed it this way. Isaiah in chapter 1, verse 18 says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That's something that sheltering in place can't take away from us, folks. And as we look toward our futures, whatever the future holds for any of us, we understand that our relationship is not going to be temporary or short-lived. In fact, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, not even death can separate us. We have this tremendous bond because of the common message that we believe and share together. By placing our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we have a brotherhood that will last for all eternity. And so it's funny how some believers can't seem to get along with each other here on earth. I've got news for you. One day we'll be in heaven for all eternity, and we'll be forever with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so I guess we'd better learn to get along now because we're going to be spending a lot of time together in the future. Your fellowship in the gospel and the fellowship in the gospel shared by the people of Philippi uh, was united in the fact that they had a common belief. You ought to read the end of this epistle sometime, and, and Paul makes reference to some encouraging statements. By the way, in my text 
passage today. I was rereading it this morning, and I think there were five or six, I didn't count them, but I think there were five or six references to the word all. He was including everybody, all believers, share this common bond in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said at the end of this epistle, salute every saint in Christ Jesus. Every saint. He said, the brethren which are with me greet you, even though many of them had never met before. He said, all the saints salute you. So what holds us together? First of all, it's a common message, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But secondly, I want you to see a common motive. Because when you stop and think about it, our church is not unlike most other churches and not unlike the church at Philippi. Now, they had had problems, and our church certainly isn't a perfect church either because our leadership is not perfect. But Paul addressed some of the problems that they had at the church at Philippi and yet alluded to the fact that they had a common motive for serving the Lord. If not for the Lord Jesus Christ, I am convinced that many of the people at the church in Philippi would otherwise have never spent time together, would, would not have hung out with each other, wouldn't have had any other common interest that bonded them together, but for their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul touches upon the glue that held these people from diverse backgrounds and circumstances that held these people together. Look at verse 7. <laughs> he said, Even it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart. Inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. The glue that held them all together was love. <coughs> he said that he had them in his heart. And then he says in verse 8, for, for God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. He says, I, I'm not being pretentious. I, I'm not making this up. As God is my witness, as God is my record, I have a genuine abiding love for you as God's people. He said, I long for you. That's a word that literally means that we, he earnestly yearned in his heart for them. And we, when he spoke of the bowels of Jesus Christ, that's maybe not terminology we would use today, you have to understand the context and the culture that he was writing to. The city of Philippi was a coastal city. It was in the ancient region of Macedonia, which is modern-day Greece. And the Greeks had an understanding that the bowels or the inner parts of the person were the seat of a person's emotions. I guess it would be like us saying to you today, I love you with all of my heart. That's what he was expressing here in this statement to the Philippians. It was a shared love that cements believers together, and it will carry us through any crisis that comes our way as a church. It holds us together. I want you to see thirdly, though, there's a common mission. And that mission is alluded to in verse number 12. I didn't read it a moment ago, so let me do so now. But I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Even though we've been uh, separated from each other personally, uh, we've stayed in touch through various uh, means and methods, and we've also been hearing from our missionaries. Pastor Jake gave a wonderful missions report uh, a couple of Wednesdays ago, and we hear from our missionaries regularly. I'm excited, and, and it, it thrills me. At the same time, produces a tremendous burden in my heart for our missionaries. This morning, I read a letter from our missionaries, the Leadbetters, that are serving in Ireland, and it was so encouraging because Brother Ledbetter is looking for new ways of taking this situation that we're experiencing and getting the gospel into his community. He's already put out a whole uh, schedule of activities for the summer in anticipation that these uh, restraints will be lifted and we'll be able to meet together as a church. He's planning a men's conference and a, a, a function a camp for the kids. And uh, it's just exciting to me. It inspires me to see he's moving forward to reaching his community and using the difficulties rather to further the gospel. I got a letter from Brother Andrew Au, who, by the way, is in China. Brother Au initially wrote me initially and said that his missions board was suggesting the possibility of him coming back to the States because of the COVID virus there, and it hit, it hit it hard, especially in China, where it seems to have originated. And by the way, uh, most of you know that China is underreporting the difficulties that people in China are experiencing, and missionaries are going right along that with their people. Brother Al could, and many people would say should, leave China and come back home during this period, but he and his family have decided to stay there. 
he, he wrote in his recent missionary letter that every time he goes into a bank or goes into a grocery store, he has to stop and they take your temperature. That it's required that you wear masks anywhere in public. And, and it's been very difficult for the Chinese people. He said there's a dear Christian lady in, in his church that took her own life because of the conditions that they're facing there in China. She was so despondent and so discouraged. And you need to pray for your missionaries. Uh, later in the latter parts of May, Lord willing, Brother Jason Russell made his way. He's our missionary to Papua New Guinea. He made his way to the States before all of this stuff hit. And so he's been on furlough. And uh, unfortunately, some of the churches he was scheduled to be in have canceled uh, him coming. We, however, as a supporting church, are still planning, Lord willing, on either meeting together collectively as a church where these restraints will be taken away and we can gather together, or we'll give him this, this slot in the Sunday school or morning service hour where he can come and preach to us and inspire us and present his ministry. And I'm so challenged by these folks that are using this opportunity with all that's happening around the world that people are calling a pandemic. I'm so grateful that missionaries and people who love God are using this as an opportunity, like Paul, to further the gospel message. They're going to take advantage of the need that's presented around the world and of the, of the nerve that we've hit in the spiritual teeth of people who are going through life and uncertain about what the future holds for them. In fact, uh, uh, thanks to our staff, our competent staff, we, we've done something we've never done for 30 years of my ministry here. We're presenting our messages online, and, and um, our staff has been able to archive those messages, and it's changed my, the way I've thought about things. I have a series of messages I want to begin preaching, and we'll start it next Sunday that I was intending to wait until all of us could get back together again. And, 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 and in the early weeks of our time back together, start this new series of message, messages I'm uh, calling Christianity 101. But I thought about what is happening with our, our messages being archived and made available to people who otherwise would never attend our services, and I decided to, to go ahead and jump right in on it. We're going to do so next week as a way of producing the gospel online and it's my hope and my prayer that people will access it, perhaps by you sharing it, where they'll access these messages on the gospel and they'll hear the wonderful news of salvation and we can take what the world deems as a very bad thing and use it to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. That was Paul's sentiment. In spite of all the shelter-in-place scenario, he wanted to understand that we had a common mission. There are some specific things that we can all do to encourage one another at this time. We can seek to bear each other's burdens, and we ought to do that. And I'm thankful for people in the church who are doing things to minister to our people. We can certainly pray for one another. And Paul, in verse number four of our text, basically says, that's what I'm doing for you. I'm not with you. I'm not able to be with you in person, but I'm praying for you. We can put the needs of others before our own needs. That would be a very good thing for us to do at this period of our church's history. To think about not so much what do I need, but what can I do to alleviate the problems and meet the needs of others. In chapter 2, Paul says as much in verse number 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in loneliness of mind, let each of us esteem others better than ourselves. Then he says in verse 4, look not every man to his own things, but every man also to the things of others. That's what we can do to further the gospel during these times in which we're living. We may temporarily not be meeting together, but the work of evangelizing our community and the world at large is still in place. In fact, our opportunities may never be greater. So what bonds us together? A common message, a common motive, a common mission, and then finally a common master. Whether you noticed it or, or not, this epistle is saturated with references to Jesus Christ. It just permeates his epistle. He's lifting up Jesus Christ and exalting Jesus Christ. In verse 1, he speaks of the saints in Christ Jesus. Verse 2, grace from the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 6, he mentions the day of Jesus Christ. And in verse 8, the bowels of Jesus Christ. In verse 10, he reiterates the day of Christ coming and is at hand. Verse 11, he speaks about being filled with all righteousness, which is by Jesus Christ. I see nothing but bright things on the horizon for Faith Baptist Church, not because of who we are, but because of who Jesus is and the fact that he is in control of everything. 
He is holding us together as his body, the church. He is our salvation and therefore our security. He is our reason for living. He is our hope and our peace. Well, he is the head of this church. Jesus is. He gave his life for this church, and one day he will most certainly return to bring his church back to himself, where we'll be with him for all eternity. And therefore, believer, you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to worry about. You're a part of his body, the church. And whether we are worshiping collectively together here at the church setting or we're worshiping together uh, through Facebook and other avenues, we are still his church. And I thank God for what he's doing in our midst. I like what Paul said down in verse 27. Look down there. Only let your conversation, your lifestyle, be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. For whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Here's what Paul was saying. Uh, Whether I'm here in bondage here in Rome in a prison or whether I get released and come see you, or maybe we can say in today's day and age, whether we are practicing, you know, know, seclusion from each other and social distancing or whether we're meeting here in our church for our services, I'm just going to be inspired when I hear of your faith and understanding that we're striving together to serve the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. I read somewhere recently, the reason mountain climbers are tied together is to keep the sane ones from returning home. We we think about it in terms of safety, if one slips or falls, the other one will hold on to it. But the, the reason we're tied together is so one person wouldn't look at the, 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 the quest before him and say, I'm not I having anything to do with that. I'm out of here. And I thought about that statement as a child of God. The thing we need to remember is that you're bound with me and I'm bound with you. Whether we like it or not, we're bound together in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a bond that we share that will last for all of time and eternity. And again, we're held together through a common message, the gospel of Jesus Christ, a common motive, and that being our love for each other, a common mission to reach other people with the gospel, to further the gospel message, and a common master, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I want to say, as Paul did, God being my record, that I long to be back together with you. I love you in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I look forward to the time we can share fellowship That's what the church is all about. It's a called out assembly of people. And right now we're not assembling together. But until then, we need to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to recognize that we have opportunities now to further the gospel that perhaps we didn't have before. And we need to look for ways to prefer or put other people above ourselves and to encourage one another any way that we can. So I want you to be safe. I want you to recognize just how much you're missed. I want you to, like myself, to look forward to the time that we can be back together and to fellowship, and I want you to look for opportunities to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. Now today, more than any any other time, we need to do that. Can we pray together this morning? Father, we thank you for the wonderful promises that we have in your word about the nature of the church, this body of believers that share these common things, these common threads. We preach the same gospel, and we have the same hope of heaven, and we look forward to uh, the same future together in eternity. We recognize that we serve the one single and deserving master, the Lord Jesus Christ. And may we lift him up during these times. May we seek opportunities uh, to serve each other and to serve our community. And Lord, we also would pause to remember our missionaries, some of them on the front lines. Some of them are experiencing far more difficult circumstances than we are and that they've chosen to be faithful. They and their families are literally on the front lines of this disease, lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. So we pray a blessing upon them today and pray that you would sustain them and use their ministries around the world. And we're grateful to have some small part in bringing the gospel around the world because of the ministry of Faith Baptist Church. We're so thankful and humbled to know that you're in control And we know that all things are working together for our good. And so bless us and use us to lift up our Savior. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless each one of you.